Right. Now, now Orr stands in the tackle. He unloads it to Turtle. Turtle gets it on to Gator. Gator holds up the pass. GD and Elfie run through right as decoys. Right. Okay. Now Johnsy's on the boil straight through here. Takes the ball in under the post. Meet high. Now listen, there'll be plenty more flash moves That's going like this this Sunday night when the Broncos blue, take on blue. North Sydney from North Sydney Oval. Hold on. Yeah. Where do I come into this? Brisbane take on North Sydney as the Broncos strive to maintain their unbeaten record. Super League Sunday 6:30 on TV. Welcome to the show. Coming up a little bit later, we'll be bringing you highlights of the match from Lang Park tonight, and that's the uh, Panasonic Cup uh, match between Combined Brisbane and New South Wales Country. Some interesting viewing there to see how some of our youngsters in the Brisbane comp are coming up this year. Uh, we'll also be talking to Gavin Jones, live from Sydney. Of course, the match between the Broncos and North Sydney this coming Sunday. Where are they now? We'll be tracing Warren Orr, former kangaroo tourists and uh, originally, of course, with Western Suburbs and uh, I think Winter Manly here in Brisbane. So here we're coming up. We'll also have highlights of last week's Parramatta and Manly match, a result that nobody could really predict. And uh, Cronulla on the Gold Coast and, of course, the Broncos and West. David Fordham's back with us again. How are you, Fordham? Very good, Billy. Looking forward very much to the clash at North Sydney Oval on Sunday. It should be a ripper, shouldn't it? I think it? it'll be a great match, actually. Actually, it's like a Queensland trial, really, isn't it? Uh, there is a fair bit of maroon quality down there in the two <laughs> sides. <laughs> David Knight back with us also. How are you, Dave? Good, Bill. Uh, certainly looking forward to a good weekend. And one thing for sure, with four, uh, three Broncos wins, the fourth one hopefully coming up, everyone's talking rugby league at the moment. That's, that's a good thing. All right, they sure are, and uh, one of the players we were talking about quite a bit last week. As a matter of fact, our George Simons Incentive Award winner uh, from the Broncos team, of course, is Greg Koneski. Nice to have you with us, Greg. Thanks very much, Billy. Well, it's been a good start for the Broncos, and I guess uh, you and all other team members are pretty happy the way things are going at this stage. Yeah, mate, we're happy the way things have gone, but uh, we're, we're approaching things on a week-to-week -week basis. Uh, even though North Sydney have lost uh, three games, we know they're going to be a very hard proposition on Sunday. Yeah, there's some good players there, and as we've been saying, uh, they have lost three matches to date, but um, they've got to click somewhere along the line, and uh, everyone's hoping it's not going to be this Sunday. Yeah, well, that's the thing with Sydney football. Um, any team on its day can be very hard to beat. Um, but they'll throw everything at us on um, Sunday. So uh, we're just going to be prepared for them. One thing you've got to take into consideration, Greg, although they didn't finish all that well in the Premiership last year, they finished very strongly. They won their last five matches, including three at home. Now, they're yet to play a, a home game this year at North Sydney Oval, and I think they'll lift themselves because the fans have been waiting since 1922, I think it is, for a Premiership win. Yeah, well, we're just going to make sure uh, we're mentally prepared to play down in Sydney. We, we had the trip down there last week, um, you know, getting used to the travel. Uh, and the foreign sort of soil. So uh, we're looking forward to the experience actually playing down there at North Sydney and uh, I'm sure if it's uh, last week's crowds any indication we, we should get a good crowd. Greg, you must be uh, happy with your own form. Uh, plenty of uh, good work around the dummy half. Well, it's, it certainly helps when you've got um, quality personnel to work with and uh, we're uh, we concentrated a little bit more on that around that area this week because um, that's probably somewhere uh, where we can always improve. Um, the way defensive uh, game it is today. I think a lot of your uh, your good work has to come from around the ruck area. What about the uh, scrums? You had a very good uh, weekend last weekend with a, what four against the head. Well, we've done a little bit of work on the scrum. We, we want to do a bit more. Um, with the inclusion last week of Mark Mark Home, we did we did a little bit of extra, and Mark went very well in the scrums. Um, but we we'll be getting down together with um, a couple a bit of help from the rugby union guys. Actually, Mark McBain's given us a bit of a hand and. Um, one thing about the old rug rugby guys, they certainly put a lot, a lot of work into their um, the scrummaging and uh, you know if it can save you uh, tackling t a few times, you know, you get six tackles here and there, well uh, it's certainly to your advantage. Greg, you mentioned about Mark Hone, an interesting point, when the Broncos first came into the Sydney Premiership, people were saying the experience of the Test players will hold them through but may struggle a little bit during the representative campaign, but when you look at some of the new buyers like Johns and Madison, Mark Hone, Rowan Tevens, great to be last week uh, for a newcomer, uh, the depth is there isn't it? Yeah, well, um, the guys have been slowly butted, blooded throughout the uh, the ranks. Uh, Mark's a good example. He's uh, he actually probably when they sign him, they're looking at him as a second row, but he he's uh, beeped up a little bit over in um, England, and uh, he's one of those without losing mobility, so he can certainly play set second row or front row. But Rowan Tevin's another guy. 
Well, here he is, Teevan, backing up to score the first try by the Broncos last week after some tremendous early uh, lead-up work from Spoken Joe Kilroy. Yeah, Joe is really firing. He's, uh, he's got a new lease of life playing for the Broncos, and it's good to see... Uh, I think by the end of the year, he could be one of the real superstars. Greg, tell uh, us a bit about this uh, travelling uh, supporters club he's got. There's an <laughs> interesting threesome there. Yeah, well, Joey's in the uh, the clothing game now. He's in the leather leather clothing game, and uh, uh, apparently he's got um, the Kilroy supporters that sort of follow him everywhere they go. So, uh, <laughs> good little set piece that one behind the back of the uh, ruck, Greg. Was that all uh, organised in advance, or are they sort of happening on the run? Just have a look at this before Greg answers this. If you have a look where Madison here, should this have been a try? Did he use Madison as a foil? I watched it again on the replay again the other night. Well, Any comment made on that after the game? No, there wasn't, but um, we all know Wally's a pretty um, clever sort of runner, so he probably picked his mark. That's a great ball there by Billy Knight. Wasn't it? He uh, unloaded beautifully there on the way down. And uh, Madison finishing it off. Greg, you're talking about your own form. Um, you look a lot. You look very fit at the moment. Would you be the fittest you've been for a while, would you say? I think we I probably did a bit more of weights at the start of the year. Um, I think everyone just uh, made a conscious effort to be prepared for the season. And we, of course, had uh, great personnel down there uh, in the fitness side of it. So um, that's something that uh, we took, just took care of. So once we started playing, we didn't have to worry about it. So we're, we're probably all very fit. Uh, we're fit enough for the competition. I think we got the players to win the competition or to go well in the competition. And. Uh, the yeah. side's uh, had a pretty good run without uh, too many injury problems. See, that's been a feature, Greg, really, hasn't it? Uh, Gino, yeah. of course, but, I mean, overall, it's been a pretty good run. Yeah, Gene's been rested for a couple of weeks. Um, probably at a pinch, he could probably play on Sunday. I don't know what the situation there is. to will make, make a decision tomorrow, but... Um, we've, we've had a pretty good run, considering some of the uh, horrendous runs some of the other clubs have been yeah. having, so... Uh, Greg, there are a lot of uh, unforced errors in the... Um, Broncos uh, turned out last week against Western Suburbs, but obviously very happy to come away with the two points. What was the soul searching done on uh, training during the week about the performance, though? Yeah, we, we probably got to try and um, maintain an effort. Uh, once we sort of had the had the game won, we probably did drop off a little bit there. And I suppose if we can take a, a line through any team, it would probably be that Manly Parramatta game, where uh, you know they certainly didn't let up. So that's probably what we've got to aim for. So you've started each game in tremendous fashion have you built up a very good half-time lead in each of the matches so far in the Premiership? Yeah, well, I suppose the lesson we can is try and take the lesson from from those games, but we're lucky enough to get away with the two points on each occasion. So, um, you know, the hardest the hardest way to learn it is by dropping two points in a game where you should have won. So I think I think we've just got to try and get a bit more, um, uh, maybe consistency, maybe uh, get in there with a bit more of a killer, killer instinct. Greg, what about defence? Is Wayne happy with uh, your defensive pattern and how that's operating? Yeah, defence hasn't really been a, um, a major concern as yet. It's probably our uh, well, ball control has let us down a little bit. And that's something that uh, we spoke of at training this week. We trying to do a bit too much with the ball the other day, do you think? Yeah, I think so. Um, without um, detracting or anything from West, there were probably a few holes there and uh, guys probably started getting a little bit toe when they saw the holes and probably tried to yeah. try to uh, do a bit too much. What about the west side? Uh, very young side. Uh, we like the look of uh, Tronk last week. He's unloading the ball nicely, isn't he? Yeah, he's always had those uh, great ball schools, which he's um, continued to work on, and he's also filled out quite a yeah. bit. Yeah. Um, they're, they're in a um, uh, probably a similar position to some of the new sides west where they're rebuilding. They've gone out to a young area. And I'm sure that's the way to go. Good support out there, though. 10,000 people to see Brisbane run out winners by 38 points to four and keep their unbeaten record intact for 88 with North Sydney to come this weekend. And our uh, George Simons Incentive Award winner, of course, Greg Kineski. Greg, uh, you'll be able to get along to George and uh, get a nice suit to step out and trip the light. Fantastic. Yeah, that's great. I'd like to, just like to thank George for that. I know he's been a great supporter of rugby league and yep. it's much appreciated. Actually, we might get you to stay here because we've got Gavin Jones coming up shortly. I'm sure he'd like to give the Jones boy a bit of a hurry up down there in Sydney. <laughs> he is playing reserve grade this week, but we won't rub, rub that in too much. But uh, it'll be good to see hear a little bit of the North, side, North Sydney side of things. That's coming up shortly. After the break, North's Gavin Jones talks to us from Sydney and Terry Kennedy with the latest from behind the sports desk. Saturday at 7.30. You ready, partner? It's showtime. A drug bust from the past. To knock it dirty. 
You don't believe that. This time, they don't miss. Magnum, Saturday, 7.30, here on TVO. It's here and now. The complete six-piece starter set of famous Arco Steel Clearview cookware. High-quality stainless steel with heavy sandwiched copper base for maximum heat distribution. And brake-resistant toughened glass lids to let you see what's cooking. The complete Arco Steel starter set of three saucepans, Dutch oven, fry pan and steamer insert, now only $179.95. That's a massive $100 saving now at Robbins, your one-stop kitchen shop. Robbins! Any luck yet? The no. Are you going through the bother of trying to sell your car privately? Yeah. There's no need, you know. Hey. Well, cop in the car. What now? Yes, right now. And drive, drive over, over to, to Brian Burt's used car division. They are looking for good used cars. It doesn't matter what make or year it is, Brian Burt Ford will pay you well for your car. Brian Burt Ford, Logan Road, Upper Mount Gravatt, near Garden City. Right now, there are dozens of people trying to sell what they claim are mobile telephones. But there's only one mobile phone that fits neatly into your pocket and allows you to move from car to car without installation. Mobiletronics Pocket Phone. It uses Telecom's new cellular network to make and receive calls almost anywhere, anytime. Mobiletronics Pocket Phone. The smallest, most advanced cellular phone in the world fits your pocket. It's your kind of Sunday in the Sunday Mail. The Maya Centre opens Monday, and this week the Sunday Mail lifts the wraps with a special 48-page colour catalogue showing all stores, all floors, and what makes it the tops in shopping. Plus, Aussie Rules fans won't want to miss this great Brisbane Bears wall chart with a full profile on each of the players and a season calendar. Brisbane Bears and Brisbane Flair. Two more things that make it your kind of Sunday in the Sunday Mail. Brisbane Broncos this weekend are playing North Sydney down there at uh, North Sydney Oval and that's coming up on Sunday and David last week North Sydney went down for their third loss they went down to Penrith and a uh, pretty fiery match. Yeah 29 points to two, two players sent off in that but the crucial one as far as Sunday is concerned is the loss of the New Zealand test halfback Clayton Friend. This, here's the incident coming up here you'll see Friend going very very high referee Dennis Spagarino no hesitation in marching Clayton Friend uh, so he won't be playing against the Broncos this weekend a two Week suspension from the New South Wales judiciary around the head of Cartwright and uh, so away he goes. But then there was a very interesting one, the incident involving um, Neil Baker who was sent from the field for the second incident. Um, he was exonerated. Now you'll see Dorothy make the breakdown here. Baker is coming in on the far of your screen there. Alexander was the one in seven that actually probably was the guilty partner but Baker got sent off, subsequently exonerated Alexander cited, and he's got two weeks uh, holiday as well from the judiciary. There's Alexander closest to Gee, us. There's no excuse for that one, is there? I mean, the guy was coming straight at him. He didn't step at all. Uh, that's amazing, that one. It's just it's, he's lucky he's only got two weeks there, Alexander, and Penrith will miss him. So the two halfbacks gone, but as I said, more importantly, North Sydney without Clayton Friend. And the referee back to reserve grade. Dennis Bagarino has got a little holiday in reserve grade <laughs> as well. <laughs> all right, talking about uh, North Sydney, of course, uh, joining us online from our Sydney studios is... Uh, former Queenslander, now with the Bears, and that's Gavin Jones. How are you, Gavin? Good, thanks, mate. Nice to have you with us. Uh, unfortunately for you, you're in reserve grade. I guess you would have looked forward to uh, lining up against a lot of your fellow Queenslanders this Sunday. Yeah, it would, it would have been good to uh, have made the side, but it wasn't to be. Were you surprised, Gavin, uh, particularly the loss of Mark Graham from the, the pack? A lot of experience has gone there that uh, you did get the chop. Um, no, I haven't been playing uh, up to par. And there's been some very strong performances, especially in the reserve grade, so uh, no, I wasn't overly surprised. Mate, it must be a bit of a shock. You are in the top ten best-dressed people in Sydney last week and out of the top 13 at North Sydney. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Cop my fair share over it. <laughs> Gavin, what's the feeling like at North Sydney at the moment? Uh, big expectations of the side at the start of the season, and uh, I know Frank Stan put a lot of work in in, in the off-season as well. Yeah, we're, uh, you know, we certainly haven't... Uh, dropped our trousers, oh, guns, sorry, um... <laughs> <laughs> best dress. <laughs> best dress no, man like in Sydney, uh, got the phone. <laughs> no, we're, we're, no, we're, we're keen, we're going to uh, give it our best shot. We certainly haven't given up the race at this stage, it's only early yet. Great right to see Kerry Bostead back on the side, and uh, we were talking earlier here in the studio about the, the uh, crucial wing spot uh, up for grabs uh, in the state of origin this year. Bowie's obviously intent on trying to get back in that representative scene. Uh, yeah, he's, he looks like he's going to play very good football this year. He should uh, 
put a lot of pressure on for a position. I think, yeah. A lot of interest in uh, Queensland, uh, Gavin, for the two young fellows from Brothers, Tony Ray and uh, Gary Smith. How have they been going? Excellent. Both of them playing very strongly. Uh, Gary especially slotted into the side going very, very well. And uh, Tony's playing playing well too. And we know to see in French, uh, second week in a row, picked in the centres. Yeah, yeah, he went uh, surprisingly well. Well, not surprisingly, sorry, he went very well. Out wide James against Penrith, so... Uh, Jamesy, it's Turtle here, mate. Yes, mate. I might be able to uh, meet you on the field on Sunday, but we'll have to meet on Sunday at, uh, at the Leeds Club. I think so, mate. All right, mate. We'll see you there. <laughs> <laughs> Priorities. <laughs> Gavin, you had a bad uh, run with uh, injuries over the last 18 months, the, uh, the arm and the knee. How's it coming now? Good, good. Um, you know, I'm 100% over both injuries, but uh, 12, months out, 12 months out of the game doesn't help, so, uh, you know, I haven't fully found my feet yet that's probably got a lot to do with why I got put back into seconds this week so obviously you're accepting that pretty well and uh, gonna get down to the task of getting back into that team in the next couple of weeks yeah well that's it Billy you've got to just uh, regroup and go ahead mate don't you you betcha how's the reserve grade from uh, North Sydney been going Gavin? Good. The, the Broncos have uh, won two and lost one yeah uh, our reserves are in the same position should be a good game too yeah it will be good yeah all right, uh, Gavin, uh, nice to talk with you tonight and uh, we look forward to seeing you down there on uh, North Sydney. But just before we go, uh, what sort of interest around the club in this clash with the Broncos? Oh, uh, yeah, well, mate, uh, I think the, the Broncos are going to draw, draw big crowds every week down here and, I'll, you know, it should be a big one there on Sunday. All right, look forward to seeing you there. All right, mate. Thank you. Good talking to you. Gavin Jones there from Sydney and, uh, of course, unfortunately for Gavin, he'll be in the reserve grade, but... Uh, I don't think it'll be too long before he's back in the big stuff. No, he's order. a great player. I think he was uh, just very unlucky in 1986, that arm injury, Dave, that uh, he missed a kangaroo tour spot. I think he was a certainty for that had he stayed on the field. He was in uh, scintillating form. And it's, a, it's an amazing selection, really. If the guy was ever going to play well, it was going to be against the Broncos. I'm sure, sure Greg is uh, pretty happy. He's not going to have to uh, confront the big unit on, uh, on Sunday. And uh, it's surprising, uh, really, that Stanton has elected, as you say, with Mark Graham out of the side now. He's going to need a bit of bulk in there. And uh, he's gone without him. You surprised, uh, Greg? Yeah, as, as you say, um, that game probably would have brought out his best, but um, he certainly showed a lot of character coming back from those injuries. Uh, here's one guy during that uh, 86 Origin series, which we lost, but here's one guy you can take heart from the way he really went through that series because he, he, he becomes such a, um, a better player through it. I remember that first appearance he made for Brisbane against South Sydney, I think, in the Panasonic Cup at Lang Park. He came on as a replacement, scored, scored an absolute yeah. gem of a try. And rattled them up too. Oh, yeah. he was. <laughs> no, I think they may pay the penalty for not, uh, for not using Gavin Jones at the weekend. But it's probably worth now to have a look at the side, Billy. And the point that David mentioned earlier, they've been very lucky, the Broncos, that uh, they haven't struck too many injury problems in uh, 88 so far. Rowan Teven has been named, as you can see there, with Gene Miles on the bench. But as Greg Kinescu mentioned earlier, there's every possibility that uh, Gino could well play in the centres. All right, that's how the Broncos line up and uh, unchanged from last week. Let's have a look at uh, the North Sydney team. There are some names in there that we're pretty familiar with. We mentioned Kerry Boaster. We've got the two French brothers in the centres uh, and then some uh, other fellas that have gone down uh, this well, year. Tony Ray, uh, you've played against him up here, uh, Greg. He's a pretty handy young hooker. He's a good player. Uh, he's got a lot of... Uh skills in the hooking department he can kick he can um, he can set play up so uh, i think one of the big ones is going to be the clash of martin bella against dowling and niebling he lost his uh, state of origin spot for the third one last year i think he's got a point to prove the uh, the man that went away on the 86 kangaroo tour yeah i'm sure martin will be fired up as well all right so there'll be uh, the match coming your way this coming uh, sunday night at 6 30 here on tvo and uh, that's from north sydney oval it's uh, time to review what's been happening in rugby league for this week so let's go behind the sports desk with terry kennedy Thanks, Bill. It's been another busy week off the field in Rugby League. No shortage of tales of the matches that just got away. A case of mistaken identity at the New South Wales judiciary and on the local scene, the launch of the State League and the Brisbane combined side make their debut in the National Panasonic Cup tonight. Lady Luck continues to avoid the Gold Coast Giants. They lose by one point to Cronulla after claims a Sharks try was scored on the seventh tackle. Despite their run of bad luck, Coach Bob McCarthy believes there's light at the end of the tunnel. I'm a believer in that old adage of not crying over spilt milk. Um, admittedly, we've had a few misfortunes, uh, you know, what with the Ronnie Gibbs, Gibbs saga and also with the injury toll, but, um, uh, but there's not much you can do about it. you just got to you know, just pick your side and just do the best you can. Tuesday, in New South Wales General Manager John Quayle cites Penrith halfback Greg Alexander to appear before the judiciary after a case of mistaken identity. 
Alexander's teammate Neil Baker was sent off for an alleged head-high tackle when in fact Alexander was the culprit. The judiciary exonerates Baker but deals out a two-week suspension to Alexander, Penrith's best player. North Sydney take on the Brisbane Broncos this Sunday and the Bears coach Frank Stanton wheels the axe at training on Tuesday night. Former Queensland Origin forward Gavin Jones feels the brunt of Cranky Frank's anger when he is dropped from the first grade team, which is yet to win a game this season. The Broncos team is selected and there's no great surprises, with Gene Miles being named as a fresh reserve, but if he's fit by Saturday, Gino will replace Rowan Teven. Wednesday and the Kiwis are coming, or so they hope, a New Zealand syndicate is looking at the possibility of entering a team in the Sydney Premiership next season. Two representatives met with John Quayle and former Kiwi skipper Mark Graham to discuss the proposal. Quayle believes there's no reason why serious thought should not be given to the idea. Mark Graham also fully backs the proposal. Thursday and the Dancing Girls launched the 1988 State League competition. With the big names like Lewis, Miles and Dowling missing, the local competition has been downgraded this year. But the State League will still take the game to the country. In stark contrast to last year, Toowoomba are the favourites to win the competition and the Clydesdales coach Greg Platts admits the pressure is now on. I must say that I prefer it uh, the way it was last year. It's a lot easier to motivate players to actually uh, perform above what they think of their capabilities. Uh, this year we've sort of put ourselves up on a pedestal and it's going to be very difficult to uh, stay there. There's been a gross lack of publicity about tonight's National Panasonic Cup clash between Brisbane and New South Wales country at Lang Park. The Brisbane side lacks any great stars, but coach Ross Strudwick says a chance of playing in the Sydney competition next season should inspire his team. You know, there's quite a few good footballers there and they're probably all you know, vying on the possibilities of a Sydney contract, so they'll be out there giving it their best. And you know, this is an opportunity for them to show up in a top match where they're not going to get that in the uh, Brisbane competition. So you know, there's a lot of, lot of stake for individual players. Strudwick believes his team can get away with the match against New South Wales country tonight. If they do win, they'll take on Newcastle next Wednesday. And now here's the big if. They could even take on the Brisbane Broncos, but for that to happen, both teams would have to make it through to the final. From behind the sports desk, I'm Terry Kennedy. Thank you, Terry, and uh, we'll be hearing from Terry a little later with that match from uh, Lang Park tonight. We'll take a break, and there's more rugby league action coming away shortly. Stay with us on Ball and All. Next up, Tony Durkin's Whatever Happened To. Well, for months you've been training. Put your body to the test. Now you're fit and ready to mix it with the best. It's even bigger. Well, each week we have our segment of uh, Where Are They Now? And uh, this time around, uh, in result of a, a query from one of our viewers out there, matter of fact, Bob Wynn out of Brackenridge suggested uh, we chase up Warren Orr. Warren Orr was a kangaroo uh, winger, of course, very good winger too. And so we set Tony Durkin into motion and uh, he found him up in North Queensland. So here now is Tony Durkin with Warren Orr. The long blonde locks of Wynnum and West Winger Warren Orr were his trademark as he slipped along touch lines and thrill big crowds throughout the 70s. But how things have changed. The father of three is somewhat of a mother hen these days as he nurtures his offspring and his many great memories on the beautiful and tranquil Atherton Tablelands. And while the kids gather the eggs, the only real speed their dad relates to these days is that on his motorised trike among the Jersey cows at the Kirai Research Station. Well, Warren, here we are at uh, the Kirai Research Station just out of Atherton and 
This is where it all started for you. This is where you were called into the Queensland side. In fact, you were working here when the phone call came back in the early 70s. Long time ago, but some great memories since. Uh, that's correct, Tony. Um, yeah, it seems a fair while ago now. Uh, this is where it all started for me. I was working at this exact same, the same spot uh, then, and I'm back here again now. And, of course, now it's home for your wife, Gail, and your three children, soon to become four. That's so you, you have, uh, even though you are originally from Brisbane, you have quite an affiliation with this area, don't you? Yes, uh, we've been up here, uh, I, up here five years. I came back up in uh, 1982. Uh, well, six years now, and uh, um, yes, overall, I suppose I, I've lived up here for about nine, ten years. Well, of course, 73 was, was your big year, wasn't it? That was the, the Kangaroo Tour. Uh, you went on the Kangaroo Tour. Must have been a great feeling. There's been some talk since that uh, maybe you didn't enjoy the Kangaroo Tour as much as you should have done. Obviously, that's the highlight of anyone's career. And, in fact, there were some reports in the press afterwards that some of the players, Johnny Lang, yourself, Billy Hamilton, were on the outer. Uh, do you still hold those memories? Was that the way you saw it in those days? Oh, uh, not exactly. Uh, <clears throat> I suppose looking back on it now, uh, I, um, before the, we went over to England, I was, I was out with a bad ankle injury for a couple of months, and looking back on it, I, my form didn't really warrant you know, selection in, in the test, test sides, in the, in the test games at the, during the tour. But uh, You enjoyed uh, the trip? Yes, it was a fantastic experience, and... Uh, it was a very enjoyable trip. How yeah. many games did you play on that tour? Oh, possibly about ten, I suppose. Yeah. So uh, it was, your next year was, was the big one, the, 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 the year that you'll probably cherish most in your memories because you, in fact, played two tests for Australia that year against Great Britain. Unfortunately, you dropped for the third one, but uh, the great moment must have been scoring that only try in that test match at Lang Park, in which Australia did win. Yeah, that was... Uh... Looking back on, on 1974, that was um, a, a really uh, great year for, as far as I was concerned. Uh, not for only, not for you know, scoring a try in a test match, as you say, but after that relatively disappointing kangaroo tour, I was um, very pleased to, uh, that I could, I, I could show, show myself mm. and other people, I suppose, I could bounce back and make a, a test side, play for Australia the following year after that kangaroo tour. But uh, it, it was a great experience to run out uh, yeah, to Lang Park. Particularly, yeah, as I was going to say, particularly at Lang Park, your, your home ground and, and in front of a big crowd. And uh, I believe the three Queenslanders in that side laid on the try that you scored, the only try in the game. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Yeah, as I remember, I think uh, Jeff Richardson passed the ball to uh, Ray Higgs and uh, he sent it along to me and just had to run through the gap and that was it. With the, and the old story, we seem to be coming up with this with quite a few of these interviews. The, uh, the side was beaten in the second test in Sydney and a few players were dropped. Most of them were Queenslanders. In fact, you were, you were retained in the, in the squad of 15, your reserve. And Lionel Williamson, who's just up the road living at Cairns now, was uh, your replacement. Uh, that's right, yes. Uh, and they went on, went on to win that, that last and deciding uh, match. Uh, but that's the way it goes, I suppose. Yeah, luck. That's the yeah. way luck goes. Warren, have you kept in touch much with the game since you gave it away? You had to give it away because of injuries. Had a couple of bad injuries, an eye injury, which at one stage did threaten uh, your eyesight, and also a back injury. Um, I had a bit of worry about eyesight in, in one eye, but you know, an operation has, has fixed any, uh, arrested any, uh, laid any fears of. Um, you know, losing sight on that eye. And the only problem is now I've got a bit of a bad back. I've had, uh, I've had a bit of some surgery uh, on a back problem that I've sustained over the years. But uh, all in all, you know, I've got no complaints really. You've got young uh, Steve coming along. He starts school next year. So maybe when he comes home and says, Dad, I want to play football and the, the local uh, school's looking for a coach, uh, that might be the start of Warren Orr's coaching career. Well, it could very well. Yeah, that's probably how, how it could start, I suppose, if, uh, if my young lad, you know, got involved with the game. And if his young lad does become involved in the game, he will no doubt feel the pressures of having to live up to the reputation of his famous dad, who so successfully sped around the rugby league fields of Queensland, New South Wales, England and France. Well, we're able to help out Bob Wynn out there at Brackenridge in tracing down uh, Warren Orr. If you have a player that you'd like to find out where exactly he is now, 
Uh, write to us here at TVO, whatever happened to, care of TVO Sport, GPO Box 666, Brisbane, Queensland, 4001. It's always uh, quite risky writing to television stations called whatever happened to, because I don't hang around too much in this business, I can tell you. I hope we do get to letter next week. We'll take a break and be back shortly. Coming up, remember this, we'll show you more right after the break. You might think this is just another news desk, another news studio, but it's much more than that. This is our news studio here in World Expo 88. Chris and I will bring you the news from on-site in this studio every night. And when Expo 88 begins on April the 30th, you're invited to join us and see how Eyewitness News is produced and presented. In the meantime, please join us as we bring you the news from our new home here at World Expo 88. Have a look at some of our historic footage and photo this time. It's what Australia France. Australia France in 1960, Bill, and believe it or not, I was old enough to remember this uh, particular series. This is the first test at the Sydney Cricket Ground, and uh, after making his debut against New Zealand the year before, it featured a fabulous performance by uh, the Garbo, Barry Muir. And uh, the French side, of course, boasted that fabulous fullback, uh, Pierre Lacaz. He kicked a sensational goal this year. But as you can see, 49,000 people at the Sydney Cricket Ground. And an absolutely incredible series because this match ended in an eight-all draw. Australia went to Lang Park the following week. There's B. Muir in number seven. Gary Parcell also played in this test match. Another Queenslander, Ronnie Bowden, in the headgear in the centres. But it was an eight-all draw this one. They then went to, the, the, uh, to Lang Park for the second test. And Australia romped in by 56 points to six. And then in the third test in Sydney, France came back to defeat Australia seven points to five. But uh, remembering Dave, uh, the 1951 side, which featured John Dopp, there's a lot of interest in the French side, despite the fact on the Kangaroo Tour the year before, there goes little B. Muir again, Ronnie Bowden. Uh, the, pre uh, the tour before that um, Australia beat France 3-0 on the Kangaroo Tour in 59. So it was a fabulous uh, series, this one. And as you can see, the crowds were out in numbers. Well, France obviously has slipped a lot uh, from those uh, years of uh, glory. And it's to be hoped that uh, Rugby League is uh, taking a, a general interest in the game in France. And I know for a fact they are to try and lift them back because we need as many competitive nations as we can. This was an amazing selection on this particular side that came out. Uh, Gilbert Penos, the fabulous French centre, was the Gaznier of France. And there's a bit of doubt whether he'd tour, Billy. And he had a brother called Rini, uh, who was about as good as you and I were. And Gilbert Penos said to the selectors, unless Rini comes out... I'm not coming out, and uh, Rini toured with Australia. <laughs> Typical French, <man. laughs> yeah. They got out, uh, they played the first game in Newcastle. Look at Frank Hyde here talking with Aaron Muspe. And also Gary Parcell here talking to, uh, it's one of the uh, Queensland, who's that? George Lovejoy. George Lovejoy. The classic was, Rini Bernos came out, he played the first game against Newcastle. Bandy Adams, a former kangaroo winger, picked him up and dumped him. Rini really didn't play any more on the tour, but Gilbert was one of the great stars on the tour. <laughs> so that the secret of that is, if you've got a good brother as a footballer, you might get a tour with a French Push out for him. That's right. Push out for him. Talking about B. Murray got married uh, to, oh, last week. Last week, believe it or not. So good on you, Garvey. I don't believe anything you tell me. No, truly, he did. He did. He definitely did. Where was the reception at the crest? I don't know where the reception... <laughs> I'm not quite sure about that one. Well, he did have his 50th birthday there last year, and uh, at that uh, birthday party, Billy said he finally found a woman that uh, could understand him after 50 years. So, well, well, good luck to him. Yeah, well, I don't know whether she'll be on Mastermind if she understands. Oh, she probably will be. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, let's have a look at some uh, football from last week. Uh, this is the match at Newcastle, and they've drawn another good crowd at uh, Newcastle, at the football stadium there. It's the one between Newcastle, Balmain, Newcastle running up winners by 20 to 16. Well, Greg Kineski is still with us, and Greg, uh, if you look here, the crowd, the great support that's uh, a la Lang Park and you've got to play them in a couple of weeks and uh, they proved last week, as you mentioned earlier in the program, any side on its day in the Sydney Premiership can get up and win and Newcastle did it last weekend. Yeah, they've had a great start in Newcastle and um, taking a line through their crowds, they're expecting um, you know, well in excess of 40,000 when we played them, so uh, that's great that the games are going well there. Apparently the tickets for that match are selling extremely well already, though. Yes, I was talking with Graham Hards, their uh, general manager at the Panasonic Cup luncheon the other day, and they're just elated at this result. Uh, Balmain scored three tries, two uh, to Matt Parrish, who's really turned over tremendously from the rugby inner days, and one to Scotty Gale. Gale's try's coming up here, and Scotty's, of course, now whipped across to Hull to play in the semi-final this weekend of the Challenge Cup, and hopefully 
uh, if he decides to get through, will be at Wembley uh, on April 30. That'll be the first time I've ever known that to happen too, Dave. There's plenty of players that have gone back for the uh, for the final, but not for the semi-final. Well, particularly so seeing he's Scotty's only played uh, a few minutes of football with Hully, he did the shoulder and came back. This is young Matt Parrish. We saw him in action against Parramatta, David, and uh, he really, Don Parrish's son, he really has uh, come across very, very well. Got some ability, yes. Uh... But we really got to look at Newcastle here. That's a great effort by them to beat uh, Balmain. And uh, they come up against Man the Warringah this weekend too. That'll be a big test for them. Well, so they get beaten by Parramatta in the very first game. And I think the score was something like 28-4. And it was thought from there that uh, they wouldn't be highly competitive. They had had good pre-season form where they beat Manly in a, uh, in a uh, trial match earlier. And they'd also beat them in the seven. So uh, the first game of the fixtures against Parramatta was just a... Uh, one against the run of play, and uh, they've come back very strongly. Well, it's a great nursery up there. Uh, there's the final scoreline. They've produced five test captains, so it really is a, a great breeding ground of, uh, of rugby league players, and they've been starved for so long. 20-odd thousand, Billy, that's a sign of things to come. My word it is. All right, we've got our uh, Try the Match competition uh, coming up right now, and here's some of the details of how you can win some great prizes. Australian Airlines, the airline chosen by the Brisbane Broncos, are once again proud to present this week's Try of the Match. At the end of the month, viewers will have the chance to win this great prize, a top-quality sporting golf set featuring stainless steel shafts to the total value of $500. This prize is proudly sponsored by the Sportsman's Warehouse on the Gold Coast. At the end of the season, Australian Airlines will provide a major prize for two to Sydney for the Grand Final. The prize includes accommodation and reserved Grand Final seats. Be watching next week and we'll show you the four Australian Airlines tries of the month. All right, let's have a look at uh, our try from last week, and uh, we went for the first one, Dave, uh, in the match against West. So yeah, it was a great lead-up work by Joey Kilroy. He was uh, forced to retreat inside his own half here, and uh, I think the important thing, David, was a great support play on the inside by four or five Broncos leading up to Tevin's try. Yeah, they were certainly there in numbers. Uh, good work from Kilroy, too, to search back to his own wing. Allenson, who was his opposite number, really got caught out of position, and uh, the Broncos finished it off very nicely. Watch Kilroy show that bit of extra pace. Realised once Allenson had chased him across field, the gap was then back on his own wing again, and then he does well to draw the fullback and fire it back on the inside to young Rowan Teven. First touch in the top grade, and what's he do? Put it over the try line. So that is our try from last week, and uh, we'll be showing you the fourth of the month uh, next week on our program, and you can win some great prizes there. We'll take a break and be back shortly. Soon on Ball and All, highlights of Manly's walkover win against Parramatta. Monday on TVO. She's gonna have a baby. They lost radio contact. So you're telling me they could be down near anywhere. You got it. Beat Company surprise package. Oh, can you keep it, please? Oh, I don't like this any more than you do. This baby is gonna drag us down. We need milk. Can we go? Three soldiers and a baby. I don't think it speaks English. Shut him up. Television's most exciting new series continues. Tour of Duty on TV. To be one of the one of the boilovers of the year so far. Anyway, uh, you could expect mainly to beat Parramatta, but I don't think anybody expected a scoreline of what 64 to 12. I know the Parramatta supporters, 20,000 of them, uh, weren't too impressed. 11 tries uh, to two is an incredible performance, and I think Greg. Your victory over Manly in the first round takes on far greater importance because I don't think too many sides are going to score seven tries against them like uh, your mob did in the first round. Well, that certainly shows that uh, Manly have got a lot of character to come back like that. Um, I think Fatty made the point this week that, um, that that was a turning point after that uh, the Broncos game. So uh, they're certainly a great side, and whatever whatever happens next time, you know, whatever we did last time is left on the paddock. Well, David, we saw Parramatta beat Balmain. They got away uh, to a great start. They led by six points to nil. This try by Cliffy Lyons brought it back to six all. They then went to 12 points to six and in the lead. And I was talking to Noel Cleal during the week, and Manly were backpedalling. They were really worried about the, the outcome of the game. They never scored another point, and uh, 58 points were rattled up in the next... Uh, you know, 60-odd minutes by Manny Baringa in an awesome display, scoring 11 tries. Well, it just shows you you can't stop tackling, and it seems that's exactly what uh, Parramatta did. Uh, as you say, they'd uh, hit the front with, uh, after about 18 minutes, by 12 points to 6. Here's another try here, a bit lucky off the pace, but uh, that made it 12-6 uh, in front after uh, a quarter of the game was gone, and yet Manny could uh, still come back and uh, win the match. I heard one of the commentators in Sydney say that uh, Sterling deliberately tried to hit the post there. Not a bad comment, is it? <laughs> <laughs> But uh, Noel Cleal, uh, he showed on the weekend, if you let him run, he could be devastating. Uh, he turned in probably one of his best performances uh, 
for quite a while, but I think anyone that, uh, if you don't put a big fella down like that, he's going to enjoy open spaces. I think one of the other things too, Dave, to remember is uh, how quickly the game can change in the Sydney League. I mean, Parramatta were uh, feeling pretty good with themselves, I'd say, after beating Balmain. Now, there's nothing to say that they can't come out next week now and uh, or, or on Sunday and beat uh, Penrith. There's, there's not a lot in it. And I think what happens is that these professional players, once they realise they can't win the match, they start thinking about next week and uh, it's quite possible then that... Uh, other sides can run in pretty big leads. Well, that's what Peter Sterling said after the game. He said, we play again in another six days' time. And uh, I'm sure that John Money will regret. But it must be very difficult, Greg. Uh, I don't know whether you've been on the end of a hiding as much as that 64 points to, to 12. Uh, but to come back, it must be very difficult to lift. Well, the thing, thing with um, the Parramatta side, they would have had to live with the loss all week. You know, we, everyone likes winning. You, you go out, you enjoy it. You, you enjoy people talking about it. But on the other extreme, when you're losing games, you've got to live with it live with for the week. So I'm sure that uh, uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see them come out and, and beat Penrith on Sunday. Billy, the defence was just non-existent. Yeah, it looks as though you really uh, could be could be forgiven to thinking the Parramatta threw the towel in, really, couldn't you? Although I noticed there's been a bit of discussion about that this week in Sydney. But There's big Donny McKinnon going over again. Dislocated the shoulder in this one. Um, he had an outstanding first 40 minutes. Now look at this one. Peter Sterling with an error like that, you just don't ever see it. Cliffy lines away under the post. There was one try in the second half, uh, which led to another Lions try, I think, from Michael O'Connor. He showed great footwork, but I think he went past five or six players, and not one person laid a hand on him, including Peter Sterling. Once you do get on top, I think uh, undoubtedly they do uh, ease up a bit. Here it goes now, Dave. Have a look at this. He beats one, two, three. Got the pass away. Now, they've, this was actually great support play here by Manly Moringa. Burke, Matthew Burke. Now, that is a confidence boost to the young fellow. He has been struggling a bit since he's uh, coming across from uh, Rugby Union. But the Manly side just ran hot on the day and, uh, as I said, 11 tries. And that was just woeful defence by Parramatta. Yeah, well, it's the story when it's, uh, when it's your day uh, and when it's not your day, most definitely, from the Parramatta point of view, things can go that way. But when we go back to the game against the Broncos, when we saw, say, Dale Shearer losing the ball in the tackle that time, resulting in a try. So things can happen to everybody, can't they? Greg, thanks for being with us tonight. We've got this uh, Rugby League book for you, 87-88. Um, there's the top five players of the year, the Premiership round by round. There's full test records. There's everything in there. You even get a mention there, Turtle. Oh, great. Uh, it's, a, it's a very good rugby league book, actually, and uh, it's out and about right now at News Agents. Oh, yeah, thanks very much. And thanks, thanks for, for uh, joining us, oh. and um, we'll catch up with you uh, from North Sydney over this coming Sunday. Sunday. Right, now, Dave, let's go back now and have a look at um, the highlights of the match down there at the uh, Gold Coast. Cronulla and uh, the Gold Coast, and Cronulla just getting home and yeah, well, controversial again. After the draw against uh, Illawarra the week before, the, uh, the Giants came back into this one, and it was decided before the uh, Gold Coast final try by a controversial drop goal. There's Andrew Eddinghausen going in for Cronulla's first try, but uh, a David Burns drop goal, David, which uh, video sh tapes show later, was uh, uh, converted off the seventh tackle. On the seventh tackle, uh, Gold Coast not being able to take a trick so far this year, but to their credit, they were down 10-0. This was uh, a good try, this one, by Andrew Eddingshausen, and uh, Cronulla scooted away to 10 points to nil, and uh, good effort from the Gold Coast to come back. Young Troy McCarthy playing a big part in a couple of tries, and uh, of course he uh, injured himself. Here's uh, McCarthy. Watch him just pass that ball up beautifully there to, uh, to Meany, I think it was, and back on the inside, finished off by Gonzali. So uh, the coast showed they're capable of some good attacking football. As I say, bad luck from McCarthy. Uh, He's uh, injured himself, I think a shoulder injury. Shoulder injury, he'll be out for a couple of weeks, unfortunately. Yeah. He was, he's really been one of the success stories so far. I know Father Bob's pretty happy with his form. Proud of him. This was a good pass, actually, from Meany back into Gonzalez. He's got a great... Uh, he's a great finisher, Ben Gonzalez, and uh, on that occasion didn't let his side down going in for a great try. But the, uh, as Billy mentioned, it, it just seems that they really can't take a trick in 88 and uh, crowd up a little bit at the weekend, but still that must be a problem for, uh, for the club as well. Here's McCarthy. Over for uh, a tremendous try. You just see he's a great step here, Bill, and great strength in finishing. Yeah, he's um, nice and rugged near that line. Gets through, forces his way through, and away he goes. Of course, they play uh, St George tomorrow night down the coast. Uh, they went down there by a point against Cronulla, and I think there'll be a good crowd uh, tomorrow night down the coast. A lot of interest. Yeah, St George are good pullers down that way. They are, and there's a number of uh, ex-Brisbane players in that St George side, so I think if the coast are ever going to uh, get a crowd, it'll be tomorrow night. They'll be given five and a half point start, but I know there's a fair bit of money on the, uh, the Gold Coast side tomorrow night. It could be very interesting. Uh, they're due for a bit of a change of luck. All right, so that's uh, the match there with the Gold Coast and uh, also Cronulla down there last week. And as David said, they're in action again tomorrow night. So if you're down that way, pop down and see what should be a pretty good game of rugby league. We'll take a break. Be back with more in just a tick.
Cup match at Delane Park tonight with the Brisbane combined team coached by Ross Strudwick coming up against New South Wales Country. Our man on the spot, Terry Kennedy, here with the highlights now. The Brisbane New South Wales Country game was the best kept secret in town. One of the smallest crowds in their history of Lang Park turned up for tonight's encounter. Early on, both teams were happy to throw the ball around. Especially Brisbane, who made a good break from within their own quarter, with veteran brothers centre Jeff Burns charging downfield. Five minutes into the match, second rower Ian Staines made a big bust up the middle and carried two country defenders over the line. But the referee, who was right on the spot, ruled that Staines had been held up. But country also did their fair share of attacking in the first quarter and they were also unlucky not to score. Chris Cumming was on his way to the line but was cut down and there was no support in sight. Number two for Brisbane, Daryl Harrison, has a ton of pace and caught the eyes one of Brisbane's best players in the first half. This break down the wing set up the home side's first try, which was scored by fullbacks Lex Neal. At quarter time, combined Brisbane led by 4-0, and they looked like they'd stretched that advantage when Harrison chipped ahead, but Lady Luck favoured New South Wales country. The game went downhill at 100 miles an hour in the second half. Brisbane continued to dominate the passages of play, but many promising moves broke down. At three-quarter time, the combined Brisbane team still only held a four-point lead and coach Ross Strudwick gave his team a stern talk. But it was all to no avail as the home side continued to squander scoring opportunities. After 80 minutes, Brisbane made it 8-0 when hooker Bill Holmes, in desperation, put a kick up from dummy half. Country made a meal of it and Holmes was on the spot to touch down to wrap up the match. Brisbane will now take on Newcastle next Wednesday night. Terry Kennedy, football and all. And of course, I'll now go on to meet that very powerful Newcastle team at the International Sports Stadium next Wednesday in the Panasonic Cup. All right, fellas, let's have a look at the points ladder in Sydney at the moment, and here's how they rate. Canberra doing pretty well there. The leading team at this stage, you've been taking on points for and against. They and come up against uh, Canterbury too, uh, Bill, tomorrow. So uh, one and three play there and it's going to be pretty tough uh, there for both those sides. Should be a top match. And of course, uh, that gives Brisbane a chance then to be one of the two teams. Uh, they, of course, if they can beat North Sydney, one of the two teams at the top of the table. Working their way through there, that's uh, the top part of the bracket. Let's have a look at the other part. And uh, a bit of an interesting one here. North's a team that Brisbane played this weekend. Uh, down there with no points on the board at all. And they've conceded 97 points for only 24 points for in uh, 88. On paper, I think uh, you'd have to go for a Brisbane win there, but as Greg Kaneski mentioned, you can never underestimate any of the sides in the Sydney Premiership. Talking about uh, the Brisbane Broncos, Terry Madison is currently second on the leading point scorers after his haul at the weekend. Michael O'Connor, what a fabulous year he's had so far. Three tries and 17 goals. He kicked... Uh, 10 goals last week, Dave, and scored a try as well, so a 24-point haul there to put him on top of the, the ladder at the moment. Terrific effort there from uh, Manly to come back after a shellacking by Brisbane in the first uh, competition game. In two games, they've come back to uh, head the uh, try top point-scoring list, and uh, they're also well up there in the try scorers. OK, yeah, well, Cliff Lyons, of course, and Dale Shearer with their uh, hat-trick at the weekend. They go to the top of the try scoring uh, table. They've both got uh, five tries in the season so far. And isn't it great to see uh, Johnny Ferguson up there as well? Well, in that game that uh, Brisbane played Canberra in the trial match, Ferguson came on as a replacement and was uh, very elusive. So uh, he's back to his best and uh, going to cause a, a lot of sides a lot of trouble. Wally Lewis and Terry Madison with uh, three apiece. They both uh, uh, scored a double in the, in the matches so far. Three tries apiece for 88 and... Uh, Brisbane very well represented there, Bill, on the top point scorers and the try scorers. All the way around they are. I think uh, indicative, Bill, that Wally Lewis is pretty keen. It's not very often that Lewis actually scores tries in Brisbane competition, so uh, he's very keen this season, and when he gets near that trial on, he's pretty hard to stop. 
All right, gents, we'll look forward to uh, seeing you at uh, North Sydney Oval this coming Sunday. The match will be here on TVO, of course, on uh, Sunday night at 6.30. Sunday night at 6.30. And don't forget, if you're down the Gold Coast way, that match between the Giants and St George tomorrow night, that should be a ripper. Get along and give that team uh, plenty of support. They haven't had the best of runs, and it'll be nice to see a crowd there tomorrow night. All right, that's about it for tonight. We'll see you again next Friday night. Until then, a very good evening.